The Duchy of Burgundy was a powerful European state in the late medieval period that came to encompass parts of modern-day France, Belgium, Luxembourg, Switzerland, and the Netherlands. It was a successor state to the previous Kingdom of Burgundy, which held lands in southern France, Switzerland, and northern Italy before fragmenting and seeing its central territory annexed into the French Duchy of the same name, which over time began exerting greater autonomy, not too dissimilarly from Norman England. The relationship between medieval France and Burgundy was complex and soon became marked by rivalry and conflict as the Burgundians sought greater independence. Now, Burgundy was a powerful state in its own right, with a strong economy and military, and it often challenged the authority of the French kings, especially upon reaching a height of power in the late 14th and early 15th centuries under the rule of the Valois Dukes. These Dukes of Burgundy would increasingly act against their French masters in favor of England, who had also previously been a vassal of France, all in an effort to gain an upper hand over the French kingdom. When England's victory over France was imperiled by the death of Henry V and Joan of Arc's subsequent rallying of French resistance to English forces, it was the Burgundians who took it upon themselves to capture Joan and hand her over to the English. By the late 15th century, the Hundred Years' War had been lost and the French captured remaining English holdings on the continent, but England had successfully asserted itself as an independent kingdom. Burgundy in the meantime began efforts at consolidating the authority of the Duke across its several constituent states and unifying territorial exclaves for the purpose of creating a centralized Burgundian kingdom. Naturally, this led to resistance from some of these states, particularly within the Flemish regions of the Low Countries and in regions of Switzerland. Burgundian Duke Charles the Bold, the most ambitious of the Burgundian Dukes, had done well to suppress these resistance movements while keeping the neighboring great powers of France and the Holy Roman Empire at bay. However, when a territorial dispute involving land in the Alsace region broke out, Charles found himself at war with the Swiss and the French Duchy of Lorraine. Charles' forces were very well equipped with some of the most modern weaponry of the day, yet found themselves repelled from Swiss lands. After launching an offensive to capture Lorraine's capital of Nancy and further unite Burgundian territories, he and his men would be surprised and cornered by enemy forces, and it would be at this battle that Charles lost his life. Power fell to his daughter Mary, who quickly made peace with Franco-Swiss forces after the French attempted to seize Burgundy proper among other territories. Soon after, she conceded to the desires of Flemish resistance movements, undoing the centralizing reforms of Charles and those who preceded him. She would marry into the Habsburg royal family, becoming the wife of the Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian, and have a son who would one day go on to become the Habsburg King of Castile, and his own son Charles V one day becoming Holy Roman Emperor himself. But unfortunately, upon Mary's death, there was a scramble for Burgundian territories by France and the Holy Roman Empire, effectively dismantling the fledgling state and exterminating any hopes for a Burgundian kingdom. But what if that changed? What if in an alternate timeline, Burgundy survived? Hello audience, Mr. Z here with another alternate history scenario for you. If you're new to the channel, welcome and stay tuned. There are two main paths we could follow for this scenario. On one hand, we could suppose that England wins the Hundred Years' War, weakening France and allowing Charles' predecessor, Philip the Good, the opportunity to consolidate his kingdom's position west of the Moselle River. On the other hand, we could consider a timeline in which Charles of Burgundy survives the Battle of Nancy, pacifies the lower league of Basel, Luzerne, Strasbourg, and Bern, ultimately achieving victory in the Burgundian Wars. We covered a timeline in which England won the Hundred Years' War before and could build off of that scenario, but to keep this simple, let's go with the latter option. Burgundy's victory over the Swiss and Lorrainians expands the duchy's borders to the Rhine River in the south, while finally allowing Burgundy proper to establish a direct border with its northern holdings, effectively turning Burgundy into a buffer state between France and the HRE. The French would be far more displeased with this outcome given that they had been receiving the brunt of Burgundy's aggressive expansionism. Meanwhile, the HRE would seek to build cordial relations with Burgundy as a check against the French. Frederick III of the Holy Roman Empire had previously agreed to recognize Charles as king rather than a duke if he married his daughter to Frederick's son Maximilian, which did end up occurring after Charles' death. We can assume this marriage still occurs with the purpose of securing a kingly title and the support of the Habsburgs against France. The Habsburg line was still coming into its own by this point, and it would be the acquisition of Burgundian territories which allowed them to become the powerful dynasty they had been in our timeline, particularly the lucrative Low Countries which would soon become the hub of a trade empire. As such, the Habsburgs would be very interested in securing Burgundy first as an ally and eventually see the throne inherited by one of their own. If this timeline continued as it had, the Habsburgs would simply retain a more powerful unified Burgundian state among their possessions, with it eventually becoming more independent of the Holy Roman Empire in a fashion similar to Habsburg Spain, likely playing a major role in the War of Spanish Succession, securing Habsburg rule within Spain at the expense of France. If the French somehow still managed to succeed in placing the preferred successor on the Spanish throne, Burgundy could be expected to fortify its ties with the waning HRE, dividing Europe into western and central blocs, and aiding the Austrian Habsburgs in maintaining their dominance in the region when new powers like Prussia began to challenge it. 
However, let's also consider a timeline where Burgundy remains a fully independent kingdom, Charles having a male heir to succeed him instead of Mary. This could potentially spark a succession crisis if the Habsburgs proved especially determined to seize Burgundy and managed to gain Mary's support, however Mary proved to be just as set on the creation of a Burgundian kingdom as her father had been, and in our timeline held great sway over her husband Maximilian. If taking Burgundy by force came into discussion, Mary would likely be able to dissuade Maximilian from pursuing it, proposing instead to maintain Burgundy as a close ally than to risk it reverting back to the French sphere. The greatest weakness of the Burgundian state was how divided it had been. It was a patchwork of multiple ethnic groups speaking different languages and in our own timeline, at the time of Charles' death, separated in many places by geographic gaps and had no natural borders to protect it from incursions by the much more powerful France and HRE. To Burgundy's credit, the situation for France hadn't been too different when it was starting out, and the patchwork Holy Roman Empire managed to maintain general control over its massive domain even at that time. Charles was aware of this situation, and had he the opportunity, would have sought to expand his domain from the Meuse River in the west to the Rhine River in the east. A number of western territories would still protrude over the Meuse River, however, likely leaving Charles with a longing for a northwestern border that extended as far as the Seine River, something which would directly threaten Paris and assure lasting Franco-Burgundian animosity. The French would likely develop similar ambitions for the Duchy of Burgundy west of the Saone River, which in turn would directly threaten the Burgundian capital of Dijon further cementing rivalry between the two. Where Burgundy fell short of France in military might or in sheer population, they would be able to compensate for that with their allies of the Holy Roman Empire in England, leaving the French vulnerable to attack on three fronts. Charles would follow the French model of establishing a unifying Burgundian identity and standardized language and impose it upon his domain, where various dialects of Dutch, French, German, and Latin were spoken. As was seen in Flanders, there would likely be a great degree of resistance to these efforts, seeing France support the independence movements of several states and feudal lords just as the Burgundians had done against France during the War of the Public Wheel. Charles, however, would successfully pacify these movements and through the use of fear and brute force, gradually suppress division within his kingdom. As the years progressed, the rivalry between France and Burgundy would have manifested itself in a series of wars and skirmishes. France would have sought to limit Burgundy's expansion, while Burgundy would have sought to undermine France's power and influence within Europe. The Hundred Years' War may very well have picked back up once England stabilized from its War of the Roses a decade after Charles' battle at Nancy, this time the war seeing Burgundy take the lead against France. Meanwhile, Mary and Maximilian's son Philip would still marry into the Castilian royal line just as he had in our timeline. The French, fearing being surrounded on all sides by hostile forces, may intervene within Spain in an attempt to overthrow Philip, potentially conspiring with Ferdinand II of Aragon against Philip and Castile. A succession crisis may occur in Spain once Ferdinand passed away akin to an early war of Spanish succession, in which the Habsburg Charles V would attempt to claim his right to the whole of Spain, while France propped up a rival successor in Aragon to limit Habsburg power in the Iberian Peninsula, though in all likelihood the Habsburgs would emerge victorious and bring about a unified Spain as in our world. The unification of Burgundy under Charles the Bold would have created a new kingdom in Europe that altered the balance of power on the continent by tilting it well against France's favor, preventing it from becoming the continental leader that they had been in our timeline. The rivalry between France and Burgundy would have remained a key factor in European politics until one overwhelmed the other. But what do you think? What might have happened had Burgundy survived? Let us know in the comments below. The US of Z thanks you for watching. Mr. Z, out.